I'm drinking gold. Your argument is invalid. In the late 90s, Pokemon ruled the world. Games, trading cards, movies, a freaking South Park parody, and rumors abound about secret Pokemon hidden in the games that just made us want to play more. Then, Nintendo, Creatures, and Game Freak made that game even better with Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Stuffed with a new region, new gym leaders, a day-night cycle, and new Pokemon to catch in battle, when I finally got to play Pokemon Gold, in a totally legit copy I totally acquired legally and was definitely not an illegal fan translation I got from the internet, I was totally blown away. And 10 years later, they made that game even better with the Heart Gold Soul Silver remakes for DS. Unbeknownst to us at the time, the regions from all these games were based on real-world Japan. The original games were based off the area surrounding Tokyo, Ruby Sapphire was Kyushu, Diamond Pearl Hokkaido, and Gold Silver, the Kansai region, including cities such as Kobe and Kyoto. Kyoto, the ancient capital city of Japan and hometown to both Nintendo and Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto, was the inspiration for Ecritique City, one of the most memorable cities in the entire game, and a city that really leaned into traditional Japanese history and culture. So, for today's video, I thought we'd head out and see some of the real-world locations from Pokemon Gold and Silver. Close to Kyoto is also Osaka, which also shows up in Pokemon Gold and Silver in the extremely memorable Goldenrod City. You might be asking if we're going to be going over there sometime and um... Our first visit in Kyoto is actually not Pokemon inspired, but I still think it's worth a visit if you ever come out here. Kiyo Mizudera, a Buddhist temple originally built in the year 778. The temple is famous for providing some of the best views of Kyoto and for not using a single nail in its construction. The name Kiyo Mizudera itself actually means pure water, and this entire temple is so beloved by the Japanese people that I'm actually kind of shocked that Game Freak didn't try to include it somehow. I actually had more I wanted to film, but it was starting to rain, and I was actually under a really tight time constraint, so I figured it was time to head on over to our next locale. Gion is an absolute treasure. It is pretty much what you'd imagine when you think of old time Japan. In the games, Gion loosely appears as the dance hall where you'd fight the Kimono Sisters and get the Surf HM. In real life, you can actually still see Geisha, although you usually have to book appointments way in advance. Gion is actually a pretty special part of Kyoto to me. You really do notice though when you're in Kyoto visiting temples and you're surrounded by all of this green that it just, the air feels so much cooler. You see, when I was first learning about Japan, I'd always imagine these massive cities that had nature all around them. Turns out, I was mostly thinking of Kyoto. Next up is a twofer. In the games, you could visit the Bell Tower, where you could battle your way to the roof of a pagoda for a chance to catch the legendary Pokemon Ho-Oh. This tower is pretty much a combination of two separate Kyoto temples. The first one is Toji, and this is where the Bell Tower likely takes its visual cues. The pagoda is the tallest wooden structure in all of Japan. On the game, you would go inside, and then you'd battle your way through, and then when you get to the top, you'd actually get a chance to catch Ho-Oh. We can't actually go inside. It's against the rules, but hey, you know what? That's okay. Getting to see it from the outside is still pretty awesome. Close to the pagoda are two halls called Kondo and Miedo, containing statues of Buddhas, and you're just gonna have to take my word for that, because filming these statues is not only prohibited, it's actually illegal. Best I can do is show you these publicly available images I found online. And while these halls aren't in the game, in the anime, the Ecritique City Gym kind of resembles them. Before we continue, I should mention that while Toji is the Eastern Temple, it used to have a Western counterpart, Saiji, but was burned to the ground and abandoned in the 13th century. Now, if you think that sounds familiar, it should, because Saiji was the inspiration for the Burn Tower, where you could encounter the three legendary beast Pokemon. I had hoped to go out and film this location myself, but time constraints and bad weather meant that something had to get cut, so sorry about that. And we've arrived at the big one. King Kakuji, the Temple of the Golden Pavilion, THE 
Japanese temple. When you think of famous Japanese temples, this one's one of, if not the first one you're gonna think of. But is it really that? Yes! Aunt yes. Baka! Beautiful design, being placed right next to a pond, and all that gold leaf giving the tower its name. It just looks gorgeous any time of the year. As for its connection to Pokemon, take a close look at the top of the tower. See it yet? Alright, let me help you out. <laughs> Obviously, we can't catch a real Ho-Oh here. The gift shop will sell you a replica of the statue for the low, low price of... 70,000 yen! What? Yeah, I still want it. Like, <laughs> I don't care if it's expensive as my monthly rent, I just want it! Please don't tell anyone how I live! Around the temple is a trail through several gardens, which also kind of reminds me of the trail found in the DS remakes. Though, admittedly, I could be reading into that a bit much. So, that's Kyoto! Now obviously, a short YouTube video can only do so much to highlight a city that's literally over a thousand years old. And that's even if I keep it focused solely on places from Pokemon. But I hope this gives you some insight into how real-world Japan influenced a video game that still ranks as one of my favorites and you probably enjoyed a lot yourself back in the day. Like I said in my Digimon video, I'm not gonna act like Pokemon has some deep artistic or cultural merit. But let's be honest, the games were fun. Going back and playing some of these games in preparation for the video reminded me of just how much fun I used to have. When I was a kid, I used to love to ride the magnet train back and forth, walk around all the towns, and I just dream of how cool it would be to take a super fast train to go have my own adventures. Now? That's my life! <laughs> Heck! I can visit a real-life Pokemon Center literally any time I want. So, I'd be lying to you if I said these games didn't play a part in making all this happen for me. And, if by watching this video, you felt a little joy remembering your own Pokemon journeys, I'm happy. Maybe someday you'll want to come to Japan and write your own adventures. And I'd love to hear your stories too, either in the comments or in videos of your own. Till then... See you out there. Yes, write the rest area location in Japanese so that other people won't know where to find it. Very clever.